welcome to the second episode of BNV Talk SC. We are your hosts, B, Brandon, V, Vince. How you doing tonight, Vince? Pretty good, man. Ready to talk some USC football. Bring y'all the second edition of the BNV Talk USC uh, video. You know, so we're excited. We're gonna go ahead and touch on some uh, offensive skill players. And uh, yeah, we're here for you guys, so let's do it. Yeah, like uh, Vince said, to that, tonight on this episode, we're going to break down uh, the offensive skill positions, uh, mainly focusing on wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, since we kind of already touched on the quarterback battle in the last episode, and we, we're waiting for that to progress once JT gets on campus, so we're just going to focus on the other skill guys for a minute. Right, right. We got some dynamic players coming back, you know, a couple guys that, you know, you know, couple guys that's out there, you know, that's, that's got some real, you know, uh, playing time and some real, you know, made some plays out there on the field that are returning, you know, expected to have big years. So Right on, right on. So let's get right into it. Let's start at the running back position, you know. Uh, if the season was to start today, we have to say uh, it'd be Aka Cedric Ware who would probably be the starter going into game one, you know. So what do you think Aka Cedric brings to the table this year as far as for the Trojans? Man, Aka is a true workhorse. I mean, I mean, it's kind of a cliche, but this guy really is a workhorse, man. And it seems like, man, I could see this guy as a, as this game goes on and and the season goes on, he's gonna get stronger. Right on, right, right on. on. He's I really felt stronger. that way about Ronald Jones last year too. And you know, him and Aka came in the same class, both right. from the Dallas, Texas area. Right. And Rojo, he kind of took off early in his career, and Aka was always in his shadows, but. Like we mentioned before, you know, every time I could been in the game, he, he produces, you know, he right. puts up the numbers, so. Exactly, exactly. And, yeah, you mentioned Ronald Jones. I mean, obviously, that's a big, huge, that's a huge loss. Guy that had almost 1,500 yards last year and right almost on. 250 carries. Uh, but we got some guys who can do it. And speaking of Aka, you know, like you said, Aka had to wait his turn. Right, you know, right. he's the, the second part of the Texas two-step that we got in that recruiting cycle. You know, this guy's a senior now. He knows it's his last year and he's going to make mm -hmm. the best of it. He came in in the best shape of his life, 215 pounds, which we t touched on in the last video. Um, and I think he's ready for a breakout. Yeah, I definitely uh, think Aka is going to have a, a, a good senior year for the Trojans. I don't know if he'll reach that 1,500 yard mark, you know, or getting mm -hmm. close to it like Rojo did last year because they are going to split the carries between right. the three guys mainly that we're thinking, you know, unless the freshman step comes in and is healthy and really, you know, can show something. But mm -hmm. right now we're just going to talk about Aka, um, Vavai, and Stephen Carr, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the three-headed monster, you know. Um, Two power guys with right. speed that can catch the ball, and then you got another guy with speed and a little more razzle dazzle. You know, a little more versatility, a guy you can split out wide. You know, one thing that's going to be interesting about this rotation, and it's the first time in a long time, all these backs are over 200 pounds. You know, yeah. and that, that's yeah. big for us. You know, we right. talk about Stephen Carr, he's our razzle dazzle guy. He's, I, I dubbed him the screen pass king coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, he showed power in the past, too. You know, he showed the ability to be able to run over a guy at the goal line like he did against Cal, you know. Right, right. Definitely showed some toughness in that game. Speaking of the Cal game, I think he had over 20 carries, maybe 25 carries in that game, a, a handful of catches. I mean, he was a true workhorse in that game. Rojo didn't play. Mm -hmm. Aka didn't play, you know. So he kind of showed his mettle as a true freshman on the road, you know, against a, you know, Cal, you know, they, they, they put some teams together every couple of years, you know, compete with us. <laughs> yeah, they Cal still. But, you know, <laughs> and then you want to talk about the third guy in that mix, uh, Vavai Malapai. Excuse me if I said that wrong. But, uh, you know, Vavai, he, he brings his own element to the run game. You know, he's more of the power guy, but he has real real good hands coming out the backfield, you know. And he's just, he, he's different from Stephen Carr and Ike Cedric Weir, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy that we love, man. He's probably the heaviest of the three. Mm -hmm. uh, still got his speed, you know. I seen him, I seen one practice, uh, one highlight where he turned the corner on uh, on Iman Marshall, and I was I was kind of surprised. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, he got some real, yeah, he's got some, he got some spin, burners, you know, you know for a 222 pounder, you know. Um, overall, just really excited, man. I think the running backs are going to kind of carry the load on offense with the you know with us having an inexperienced quarterback. Right on. Uh, so I'm I'm really happy to you know I, I really like the three headed monster. Of course, we got to see what Stephen Carr looks like when he gets back comes back from his, his injury. 
Um, but we're, I think we're in a good space. Yeah, I really hope Steven is, is healthy, you know, from the back injury. I, he sat out all in the spring, so hopefully he can come back at the beginning of fall camp and really show that he's ready to go, you know. Right, right, right. And that's what we want, man. You know, you can never have a, enough healthy running backs, you know. No. And, and USC knows that. Remember, at one point, I don't know what year that was, we had six scholarship tailbacks oh, and five. All, it was all dropping like flies. Exactly, man. and they all dropped like flies, man. So, you know, we know, you know, you guys know football or, or running back, the running back position is particularly a, a brutal position. Right. You know, so the more bodies, bodies you have, the better. Um, it's kind of going away from that whole, like, one workhorse running back, you know, just in general with yeah. football. Yeah, you know, and, and last year was really the, the the first year in a while, since Buck Allen was probably in his, what, junior or senior year, whenever mm -hmm. his last year at SC was. Mm -hmm. That was the first time we really had a, a, a back who got the majority, bulk of the carries like that. Because for a while, Rojo and Justin Davis had been splitting carries. Right. And, Right. You know, Justin Davis and Trey Madden before that. I was going to say that. Trey, yeah, even before yeah, that. Yeah, so, right? you know, this will this will go back to kind of that running scheme. But I, I definitely think that the coaches are going to rely heavily on the backs to really, like you said, help out the young quarterback, whoever it may be. Right, exactly. And, you know, got to touch on a little bit of the negative. I mean, I know Carr had a little bit of a uh, fumble-litis issue. Yeah, he's got know? to definitely tighten yeah. up on the ball security, which, you know, losing – Dalen McCullough is a running back coach. I know he was really big on ball security, right. so you right. know I, I, I kind of hope that they still institute a lot of his ball security drills into practice to help these guys develop that a little more. But yeah. definitely got to hold on to that rock, man, because turnovers is what killed us last year in, our, in in the games that we lost. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely Ohio State. <clears throat> Yeah. Anyway, um, Washington State, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, albeit, you know, twenty three or twenty four of the turnovers last year came from one guy, Sam Darnold, number three pick in the draft. But nonetheless, right. we got to eliminate the turnovers. We love you, Sam. Um, yeah, we wish you were still here, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, moving on to another position that's really important for a young quarterback to help him out—the tight ends. You know, we got oh, a yeah. lot of depth at the tight end spot oh, this yeah. year. Oh yeah, we got a lot of depth, man. You know, you look at Josh Falo who's a true sophomore, right. had two touchdowns as a true freshman last year, had the big play against Stanford on fourth and two or three in the uh, Pac-12 championship game. Yeah, kind of sealed the deal with that one. Sealed the deal with that one. You got the veteran, man, the the, the, the vet out there, Tyler Petit. Tyler Petit, man. Tyler Petit, Mr. Reliable, he's, you know. He, he has been, you know, pretty reliable over he's his Trojan career. career. You know, he's yeah. never put up the huge numbers. But when you need a play, he's you, know, there. you can yeah. call on Tyler, on Tyler, Tyler Petit. Um, and then we also have our guy who's probably, you know, potentially, well, I don't know. I mean, I won't say the best because I think follow overall might be the best. You know, Daniel is, Daniel Imatore Bebe kind of, you know, we had a lot of excitement about him coming into the, the 2017 year. And it led to disappointment, you know, mm -hmm. uh, due to injuries. He just didn't see the field as much as we would have liked to see him. Because you, right. if, if you go back to the 2016 season, uh, when Sam Darnold was a freshman quarterback, mm -hmm. he was really Sam's go-to guy he before he go really developed a relationship with Juju and Burnett the way right. he did last year. He was going to even toward baby, and he dropped some nice dimes to him yeah. last year or yeah. that that season, the 2016. 2016 season. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, it was kind of tricky with with Daniel this year. You know, he had I guess it was a hip injury that was going. You know, he was dealing with uh, most of the year. Yeah. You know, never had an injury like that. So I mean, it, it seems you know that, that they're pretty serious, man. We just hope to get him back healthy. I think this year, man, with our tight end group, and not to mention Eric Crominer, Crominer, Crominhoke, Crominhoke. Eric Crominhoke. He played as a true freshman last year. He did play as a true you freshman. Know, he was last out year. there. Yeah, I think. You know, Eric and Josh Follow kind of jumping up on the depth chart is kind of what led to Kerry Angeline, you know, Leaving. taking the exit route. And, right, right. You know, transferring. Right. But, you know, those, the two young guys are really talented. Yeah. And you look at the two vets, and we kind of know what they bring to the table as long as, you know, Imator Bebe is healthy. Right, right, you know, right. One, one thing I definitely like to see them all improve on coming into this season is their blocking. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. like we said, the running backs are going to be a big factor. The run game, right. uh, the zone read, tight ends got to do a better job blocking. You know, you yeah. go back to that Ohio State game, and I, I hate to harp on the last game of the season, but the last time we saw those tight ends, they didn't do that great of a job. So. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, to be honest, to be fair, man, uh, it was a lot of uh, pushing and shoving, a lot of bullying going on in that game, you know. Right, right. Uh, not, none of it by us. But, uh, you know, 
like you said, man, blocking is going to be important. We just talked about the running backs. It's going to be a run-heavy team, you know, like we touched on in the last video. So it's very, really important for those guys to uh, get in that weight room and, and be able to move some guys around. Right. On. You know, they're all receivers. Well, Chroman Oak. Um, I'll kind of label him as a block first guy. Yeah, I think he's a block first guy, but it's still an area I think yeah. as a group as a they group, can yeah. all really right. you know work on improving. And the one thing I think will help in that department is having Kerry Colbert as a full time tight end coach this year. Right, you right. Know, that was an important addition to the staff. Kerry Colbert had been on the staff as an as a coach's assistant for what the last two years, mm -hmm. and this year because of the NCAA rule to bring in an eleventh coach. He was promoted to the full time tight end coach, so that will really get that position a little more of a uh, of a foundation as far as right. improving and going forward, you know, right. recruiting and all that stuff. So. Right, right, yeah. Because before John Baxter was kind of doing double duty, he, yeah, was, he, was, he coaching was tight ends time between tight ends and special right. teams. So, right, you know. right. So it's a good thing that we actually got a full time tight end coach in there now, so he can focus mm -hmm. on what he does, meaning Baxter. Uh, as far as special teams, and we got a guy who's a USC great, you know, he was a receiver, you know, I, I trust him completely in, in, uh, in coaching our guys up. Um, I, you know, production-wise, I mean, I, if, I think if we can get uh, 50 to 60 receptions between, man, you know, that'd be three a dream come ends, true, man. That would be a dream come true. <laughs> that'd that be a would dream be, come true, man. I mean, we're talking 20... 20 apiece? Yeah, we're talking you know, about some production that we haven't seen at that position in quite a Yeah, time, and you know right? what? And I keep, you know, I'll go, because we go four deep at tight end. If we can get 60 catches and six, and six touchdowns between the four, yeah, I think those are good numbers. You know, it, like I said in the beginning of this segment, you know, tight ends can be a quarterback's best friend. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if we can, you know, exploit the middle, it'll open up things on the outside. You'll see right. more one-on-one -on -one coverage, which leads us to our next position, mm -hmm. the wide receivers. And it, the wide outs. Man, and if you go back to, you know, Michael Pittman and Tyler Vons on the outside, they are one-on-one -on -one matchup nightmares man. for defense, you one -on -one know? One-on-one matchup nightmare. The only highlight, I know we keep talking about the Ohio State games. It's fresh in our minds. But, <laughs> yeah, it's just really fresh in our minds. Y'all just don't know. Um, but, yeah. This guy, Tyler Vons, man, let's just talk about TV for a little bit. Um, I, I love Tyler, man. I thought he was so silky smooth coming out of high school, the way he ran his routes. You know, and it, it, it took him a little while to blossom mm -hmm. in the last year, but it was his first year as a starter, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And once he kind of embraced that role and took over, I think a big turning point for him was that drop in the end zone against Texas, man. Okay. I hate to bring up something negative. But when he dropped that ball, he came back the next week with a different kind of fire to right. it. You know what I mean? Right. And you didn't see, I don't know if we saw any drops from Tyler after that point in the season. You know? it's, it's hard to find a drop uh, with him. But like you said, man, it's that, that mental metal that you have to have. Right. In order to, you know, you have a big game against Texas and you don't, and you come up short and, you know, on a play. And this guy only got better as the year progressed. He really did. You know, he put up some nice numbers. He, he finished the year with 51 catches. Uh, 690 yards, Almost which, you know, they're, those aren't, you know, outstanding numbers. But for a guy who didn't really come into his own until about five, six games into the season, right. you know, that's pretty damn good. Right, right. I mean, his first big play was uh, game four against Oregon State. He caught right. that, you know, he had that deep pass. But, uh, yeah, like, like, like Brandon said, I mean, this guy didn't start the season as a starter. No, he didn't. You know, and, you know if you go back to the beginning of last season, uh, it was Stephen Mitchell on one side, on the outside, and and Jalen Green. Jalen Green, you know? yeah. yeah. And both of those guys are gone. One went to the went undrafted and got picked up by the Rams, and Stephen Mitchell and Jalen Green. Uh, I don't know what's going on with him. I think he's at Utah State. Yeah, Utah State. State. I know he was supposed to be going to Illinois, and right. now he's at Utah State, I right. believe, or right. supposed to be at Utah State, which is kind of a coincidence because he was pushed out by. Uh, uh, Tyler Vons to go to Utah State where Tyler Vons' brother plays. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he got a brother at Utah yeah, State. Yeah, he's got a brother at oh, Utah okay. State. Yeah. Okay. Speaking yeah, of that, man, I seen a video on the younger uh, Vons, man. Yeah, like the 2021 kid? Or, yeah. yeah, he's supposed yeah. to be nice. Yeah. They say he's dope at baseball, too. He's, yeah. you know, he's a you know, potential pro prospect. So, yeah, good. Shout out to the Vons family. Yeah, man. great, great bloodlines there. And they all baseball players, you know, so that's pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, Tyler Vons, man, this is a guy – like like we like we've been talking about, you know, he finished with seven hundred yards. Uh, I'm not sure how many touchdowns. Uh, and 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 you yeah, know, five. Yeah, five. Five touchdowns. touchdowns. Okay. 
Um, you know, and he didn't play the whole season. You know, this guy is ready for his breakout. You know, he's ready to show up, show up every week. The light bulb has definitely went off for the guy. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's only a matter of him staying healthy. Had, had a great spring camp, you know, by right. all accounts. It was unguardable in the spring. And, you know, a guy who was had a great spring camp last year coming into the season, great fall camp last year coming into the season, mm -hmm. and then unfortunately got hurt, yeah. Michael Pittman, man. And Michael Pittman, yeah. when, when you look at him, he's just a big, big wide receiver, man. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about a guy who's 6'5", maybe 6'6". Six, six. Mm -hmm. You know, good hands. Mm -hmm. Made some one-handed catches last man, year. Great one. We just see one against Ohio State. He made on third and thirteen. Man, I just, I, I, I really can't wait to see Michael Pittman as a full-time starter in this office from beginning to end because he's really, he's, he's got a big target range. You know, and oh, that's yeah. something that a young quarterback needs. A receiver who has a, a wide catch radius. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I was just gonna say the wide catch radius. This guy, uh, Tyler, uh, uh, Michael Pittman Jr. Yeah, Michael Pittman Jr. got yeah. good bloodlines. His, his yeah. props played in the NFL for the for the Buccaneers for the a long time. The buffest running back I've ever seen in my life. Like, the dude looked like a bodybuilder. I, 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 I think, think he is a bodybuilder yeah, now. I think he is yeah. a bodybuilder now. And he looked man. like that on the field. I'm like, this dude looks like a bodybuilder on the on the football field. But yeah. um, yeah, man, I love the kid, man. I love him because he's so physical. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's a physical player. He's a physical receiver specifically. You don't have a lot of physical receivers, you know right. what I mean? This is a guy who plays special teams, runs man, down there I on kickoff, runs down there on punt coverage. I loved it about him, man. Love it. Special was, teams demon. He, I honestly, I honestly felt like he should have got special teams player of the year his freshman year. They gave it to Adoree, which, you know, all due respect to Adoree, he got the touchdown, but Michael Pittman did a lot of dirty work on special teams. Ran down and made a lot of tackles, you know what I mean? He really did, but... Adore is Adore. Yeah, Adore. Adore <laughs> got in the end zone. <laughs> you know, I love Pitt too. He made a lot of tackles and a lot of great plays, just like you said. But uh, we know who was getting in the end zone. Yeah, know? and that, I guess in the in, in the world of college football, that's what counts, right? That's what counts. You know, you got to <laughs> score to win the game, right? Yeah, but yeah, Pittman is uh, Pittman is, is is ready for his breakout too, man. It's been yeah, a lot of man. reports that Pittman has already got it in his mind that this is his last year, so he's out there. You know, hey, that's his, his yeah. decision, and he's going to prepare himself like it's his last year, so he's going to prepare as hard as he can to go out there and, and make plays. You know? Yeah, and you know, that's what happens when you have good players, especially at a school like SC. You know, you're going to have guys who have the three and out plan, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Whether that be graduating in three years or, you know, leaving for the NFL in mm -hmm. three years, that's just part of bringing in elite talent, you right. know? Right, and, and as elite as these guys are, it's really going to depend on, you know, what the quarterback can do. But I like the fact that he's going to be throwing to Tyler Bonds and Michael Pittman right. on the outside. Right. But whoever the quarterback is, he's got a great, you know, just speaking of the receivers, he's got a great one-two punch. You right. Know? You know, he's got a great one-two punch. You move into the slot, and it's a little bit of a question mark there. Mm -hmm. But we have a guy in Bayless Jones who, mm -hmm. who actually mm -hmm. was on the field a lot last year, but just didn't get the touches maybe. Right. Didn't right. get the touches. I know him and Sam had uh, some issues connecting on the deep ball at times. Mm -hmm. and, and then he also had Deontay Burnett in front of him, so that was another thing. Yeah, we can't forget about Deontay, too. Deontay Burnett, man. That dude, that's, we lost, that's a thousand yards right there. That yeah, that was lost. a thousand yards that, that we lost dude, right there. I mean, Tyler, that's a soldier right there. He's one of my all-time favorites, man. This is a guy who came in. I just want to talk about him really quick. Came in, had a scholarship from Washington State. Yeah, yeah. You know, blue ended up shirt. taking the blue shirt with USC. Was a Rose Bowl, other than Sam, was a Rose Bowl hero, you know? Yeah, right on. Had Great the trifecta player. that had, had the hat trick touchdowns that, in that Rose Bowl game. Great player. But, you know, you look at Bayless and what he brings to the table wow. is a lot of speed, man. Mm -hmm. And he, he got a chance to show it off a few times on some punt returns, or not punt returns, kick returns kick last return. year. Right. And he almost broke a couple of those. So, you know, there's a good chance he still contributes uh, in that aspect on special teams. But, you know, coming out of that slot with that kind of speed, he could be a real mismatch, right. you know, over the middle. Right. And the good thing about him, too, is we heard a lot of good things in spring about him. Yeah, we did you hear know? some good things you about him in spring. It, you know, there's a lot of reports out there that he's kind of a different player, you know, so maybe the light bulb went off for him, too. Right, right. You know, so I, I, I'm excited to see him. I, I'm excited about his versatility. 
You right. know, he's kind of a you know a do it all. You know, he can get the you can get the screen uh, screens. Right. He can get the the fly even a couple times. Right. You know exactly. He can take some handoffs. He can run that 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 wheel route out the backfield. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he's ready for his breakout. You know, this is his what third year in the program total. Yeah, this will be his. his going he's redshirt his, sophomore, I think. Did he redshirt his freshman year? I think he did. Yeah. So this will be his yeah. redshirt sophomore. Yeah. Year. So you know, this is his third year, and, and you know, by all accounts, he's out there making plays. You know, he was making plays in the spring. So he's going to get his shot to really shine, and the more weapons, the better. You know, and sticking in that slot position, he is going to have a bit of a battle with incoming freshman Amon Ross St. Brown, especially yep. if, you know, JT Daniels gets that starting job because him and Amon Ra have quite the chemistry with one yeah, another. Yeah, so that'll be, that'll be something, another position battle interesting to watch coming into the spring or coming into fall camp. So, you know. <clears throat> Uh, and then you look at the guys behind the uh, outside receivers, and they're young. You know, they're young as far as time on the field. You got right. Josh Imator, Bebe. Not a lot of experience, right? Yeah, not a lot of experience with Josh Imator, Bebe. He had a few catches so far in his career. Um, a guy who's a physical freak, though. You know, we talking about a dude who has what a 46, 47 inch vertical. Yeah, league. something ridiculous, something ridiculous at that opening. Like that. I mean, you guys can look it up on YouTube, man. This jo Josh Imitor Bebe, uh, 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 what is it? Uh, vertical league. I almost said forty, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy, the kid's a freak athlete, man. He's a brother of tight end uh, Daniel uh, Imitor yeah. Bebe. Um, but yeah, we're waiting on him to put it together too, man. I mean, he has all the physical tool, tools. He's like right. a little, little baby T.O. out there. Right. He, um, he's definitely so, uh, so. wide in the shoulders for, for sure. So, right. you know, and then on the other side, on the outside, you got Randall Grimes, the guy who redshirted last year. Randall Grimes. You know, I like Randall Grimes from looking at his, his high school highlights because that's all I could really go off right now. Um, I always was intrigued by a guy that size, he's about 6'5", mm -hmm. and the way he moved when he caught a screen pass. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he can take you over the top, obviously, and, and, and compete for the jump ball, but he's a guy who, he, he's got some moves for a, a, a dude that size. You know, we mm -hmm. talked about Michael Pittman. He's not going to catch a lot of screen passes in this offense, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. He, he'll catch a hitch here and there and make a move and, and yeah. really overpower Every a guy. Every now and then, probably throw him a little, you know, bubble with some yeah. blockers or something. Yeah, know? but, you know, Randall, he's he's an intriguing athlete for somebody who's 6'5". So, I, I hope, you know, it, it's going to be hard for him to break onto the field with guys like t Bonds and Pittman in front of him. But I hope he gets a little bit of a shot to at least – Show us what we had to look forward to in the future. Right, right, right. You know, he's a yeah, he's a great player out of Vegas. You know, um, yeah, out of Vegas, we'll Desert Pines, Desert Pines. You know, so we'll see. You know, we'll, he's definitely gonna get a chance to, you know, he's gonna. I think he'll get a chance to do a little something. You yeah. know, I think he'll get a shot. You know, to you know, you know, T see what he can do. T is pretty good about it. if a guy's ready, he, they put him in. You know, right. and uh, T right. is still the full time receivers coach. Um, I know they do a lot of work with my guy, uh, Prentice Gill. Shout out to Prentice. That's my boy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully, you know, they got them guys ready, man. They got them boys yeah. ready to go. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we got to develop wise. that. Yeah, we got to develop that depth, man, because anything can happen. You know, if Vons or Pittman go down, somebody got to step up. Hey, you know? somebody got to step up. And somebody that's what it's about, man. You come, you come to SC, it's not about, you know, fine. it's next man up. Right. It's next man up mentality. Exactly. So exactly. you got to prepare like you the starter all the time. All the time. Don't get complacent. You know, prepare like you, you know, like you all American, you know, and go out there and, and make it happen. You know, that's all you, that's all you can really do. You know, um, any other receivers? Who else we got? That's uh, outside of the incoming freshman. We got Mike Williams. We'll go yeah, maybe. we got, or Devin Williams. Devin Williams, I'm Devin sorry. Williams. Not, yeah. Hey, maybe, maybe he will be Michael. Maybe, hey, look, I'm, I'm the putting the it out there. Dream. Yeah, I'm putting it out that's there the for him to be dream. him to be Mike Williams. You know what I'm that's saying? The the dream but yeah, right this there. is a kid that's six five, you know, two hundred five pounds, something like that. You know, he's I've seen him at a couple of uh, spring practices in the huddle with the receivers. He's a big kid, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's tall. Yeah, he's at tall. Least six he's five. He he reminds me more of a Dwayne Jarrett body type right, than a, right. than a Mike, Mike Williams, Williams. But right. you know, Mike was about two. I think Mike might have been two fifty at one point. I don't know. But yeah, I'm definitely yeah. interested to see, you know, what he brings to right. the table, man. Right, right. I'm interested to see. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, there's a lot of talent, man. There's some young talent. There's some guys that are proven, you know, just like, you know, we got some guys that are proven, like a Tyler Vons, you know, we got some guys, you know, at running back, you know, Stephen Carr made some great plays, carried man. the game against Cal as a true freshman. 
Um, Michael uh, Pittman, when he got his opportunities, yeah, he made balled big catches. Out. Made big catches. You know, like the one-handed catch against Ohio State on third and thirteen. Yeah, that, just, was, yeah, that was a great catch. That was a great catch. He had a great couple great you know, catches the in the Pac-12. You know, you look at you go back to that Ohio State game again. You know, we hate to hash on that one, but th those two Vaughns and Pittman made some good sideline catches. Man. You know, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself and dub JT the starter already, but, you know, one of JT's specialties is that back shoulder pass on the mm -hmm. sideline, man. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. does that better than I've seen a high school quarterback do, mm -hmm. you know, and if he could develop those chemistry, which I've heard he's already been working with these guys, yeah. if yeah. he could develop that kind of chemistry, you know, with, with those two outside guys, along with, you know, what he already does with uh, Amon Ra, and I heard he's already said his favorite receiver so far is Bellis Jones. Mm. Just because you can't overthrow the guy. That's that's what I heard. Wow. I heard he said, hey, Bella wow. Jones, is, it's impossible to overthrow him because he's going to catch it. Man, well, so, there it is right there, Villas. <laughs> hey, there it, it is. We look forward to seeing it, man. Yeah, we definitely look forward to seeing it. If he is named the starter, you know. Yeah, we'll, if he, we'll, well, whoever is named yeah. the starter. I want to see Bellas take the roof off. Oh, yeah. Know, take the top off. Yeah, take the, the top off. We definitely want that, man. You know, but overall, just great talent. Just overall, uh, that's gotta, what we do, man. That yeah. shit bring in the talent, baby. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We just got to, you know, let's let's put it together for another nice run. You know, I, I've been listening to a lot of reports, and you know, some people say ten wins is kind of far fetched this year, but you know, with the, with the kind of talent, honestly, if the O line could stand up to 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 be quality. With the skill guys that we just mentioned, you know, from running backs to tight ends to wide receivers, I think we got a good shot no matter who the quarterback is. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to be okay, man. I, I, um, you know, just to touch on the O-line, uh, you got Chuma Doga, right tackle, who's a, what, three-year starter? Three-year starter in Chuma. Uh, we got uh, Andrew Voorhees at, at, at right guard. Uh, he, he started a handful. Did he start most of the season? Uh, he did. He started he once uh, Vavai went down. Or, not Vavai, I'm sorry. Viani went down. Viani once Viani went down, went down kicked, yeah. Voorhees came in. But Voorhees is also coming off an injury in the spring. True, true. So, so we got to see what his health is like when he gets know. back. There's depth along the O-line. Uh, I know yeah. we said we was going to focus on skill position, but if you go down the O-line, you know, you still have, we, we talked about the depth at center last time mm -hmm. with Brett Nealon and uh, uh, Justin, Dietrich. Justin Dietrich behind uh, Toa Lobendon. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you look at the guard position, you still got a guy like Frank Martin who's there. Yeah. Uh, you still have uh, Elijah Veritek who Elijah graduated Veritek. last year. Yes. You know, yes. Liam Douglas is going to be in the mix. Uh, he's an incoming freshman. Right. Um, so, you know, there, there's depth there that's waiting to be, you know, blossomed, blossomed and, mm -hmm. and coached up and, and ready to go. So if they can hold up, you know, and give whoever the quarterback is time to, to get these skill guys the ball, I think, we'll right. be, I think we'll be a force to be reckoned with in the pack. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you completely. I think um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a fun ride, you know. Talking about the wins overall, win total. I mean, we got a we had a nice little gauntlet, like a little mini gauntlet in those first uh, two games. Well, you know, really, you think you look at the first mm -hmm. month, first yeah. four or five games, it, 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 it'll tell us a lot about this team and this coaching staff. Right, and it'll the meat, the meat of the first month is that at Stanford, at Texas, you know. Right. So we're going to find out a lot after game three. We'll oh, yeah. find out a lot about the team. But I think we can do it. You know, I think all the pieces are in place. I mean, everybody, I know everybody out there is preparing. You know, we're not trying to put our Cardinal and Gold lenses on. But, I got mine on. <laughs> but what we have coming back, you know, I think with the right, with the right nucleus and infrastructure, you know, run the ball, pound the ball, Get the tight ends involved, and you still got playmakers on the outside that are yeah. gonna. You, you can't. You know they. They'll. They, it'll be impossible for them not to make plays. Right. On. Um. I think we're good. I think we're good. So you know uh, that'll wrap it up for this episode. Look forward to the next episode. We'll be doing a defensive position breakdown, going over the depth chart on defense a little more, and uh, that's it, man. You got anything else that you want to add? No, that's it. You know, like we just want to bring you guys a little something here for the off season. What your, you know, what your beak a little bit. You know, a little skill position uh, breakdown. Hey, uh, all the skill the position breakdown. Too, man. Yeah, yeah, appreciate we, all the support from the first video. Thank oh, you guys. Yeah. Oh Thank yeah, you. we definitely appreciate that, man. We are gonna keep bringing it to y'all. Right. And uh, until next time, fight on. Fight on.